Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz, and today we're going to be talking about a developing rainfall event that's going to be occurring over Queensland and New South Wales in the coming couple of days. Then we're going to be talking about some significant rainfall expected for Western Australia, especially around the Perth area, up to 25 millimetres is possible, and I know that doesn't sound like significant, but keep in mind the drought conditions that are continuing there. We'll also take a look at some rainfall for central Queensland and far north Queensland. Of course, we've got to go up north again and take a look at that tropical load that's developing in the Arafu. A sea, and we're also going to talk about a monster typhoon that is possible in the Philippine Sea in around 10 days, which, believe it or not, considering it's a couple of thousand kilometers away from Australia, will still have an impact on the Australian weather, especially across our north. All of that plus more coming up in today's forecast update. If you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. We're starting things off taking a look at the Australian picture right now. You can see this cloud streaming in from the north over the Northern Territory through uh, inland and remote remote communities. That is the precursor convection to the low pressure trough that is going to be developing in the mid and upper levels over the coming 24 hours, especially into tomorrow. And you can already start to see some areas starting to become a little bit more enhanced with some stronger convection or some thicker upper level clouds over central Queensland and parts of South Australia even now. Now that's going to be developing into this low pressure system, which you can already see starting to swirl around through here with a very broad center located between Roxby Downs and Broken Hill in New South Wales and South Australia. Um, this low pressure area is expected to kind of stay pretty stagnant in its location somewhere in central South Australia, but it will be driving in some pretty significant rainfall through central Queensland and into New South Wales starting from Thursday afternoon, which we will just take a look at right now. Nothing too crazy on the forecast, mind you, for the remainder of today. There will be showers and the odd heavy shower and maybe a odd lightning strike as well around the New South Wales coastline and as well into Queensland too. We've also got some rain expected in parts of central New South Wales, but nothing too heavy there. It's going to be tomorrow when the rainfall really does start to pipe up. From tomorrow morning onwards, we're going to be talking about some heavier rainfall, at least moderate rainfall across parts of central Queensland and into New South Wales. This is Thursday evening that we are looking at, so tomorrow evening local time. Uh, and this rainfall will be pretty consistent as well. We're probably going to be looking at some areas receiving 5 millimetres per hour for a full 24-hour period. So it's going to be nothing earth-shattering in terms of huge quantities of rainfall uh, falling in a very quick amount of time, but it will be some moderate to heavy falls over an extended period of time. We could be seeing locations pick up between 20 to 40 millimetres and the odd place pick up 80 millimetres or so. Now the rainfall moves deeper into New South Wales come Friday afternoon and it also really starts to pipe up from about lunchtime Friday as well uh, around the New South Wales coastline. So the evening commute on Friday could be hazardous, especially for the southern suburbs of Sydney and maybe even into Canberra as well with some heavy rain starting to uh, occur there, but definitely by full blown definitely by dinner time Friday into the evening hours of Friday afternoon into the morning hours of Saturday the rainfall will be well and truly set in and it will certainly start to feel a lot heavier uh, the rainfall will also be pretty consistent across a lot of New South Wales um, uh, most of New South Wales actually especially for locations towards the uh, east of Coba anywhere east of Coba north or south of it and further east of it are expecting some pretty significant rainfall uh, accumulation Saturday morning and then into Saturday afternoon it looks like this front starts to move closer to the New South Wales coastline and by Sunday morning we're starting to see this pull further away uh, towards the coastline and it will be coastal showers and storms extending as far south as uh, probably Malacuta at this point on the New South Wales Victoria border and as far north as Brisbane and the Gold Coast <clears throat> where these heavy showers and uh, significant rainfall will be occurring. The bulk of the rainfall does look like it will be around Bega, Naruma, south of Wollongong essentially uh, where the low pressure system is expected to emerge out especially Sunday we could be seeing a low to pick up to 100 millimetres in that area. So very heavy rainfall is possible and just light to moderate rain showers, some heavy rain showers as well, especially north of the New South Wales coastline. So yeah, it definitely does look like an all round pretty wet weekend into early next week. Um, as well. Um, for big population centres such as Sydney, on Friday I'd expect maybe 15 millimetres in the evening, maybe a little bit more if you're a little bit further south like Wollongong or uh, uh, Botany Bay, maybe up towards 20 or 25 millimetres. Saturday expect 50 to 80 millimetres around the Sydney area. Sunday probably a little bit lighter at around 30 to 40 millimetres or so, but if you do live down south around Naruma, Bega, um, maybe even as far inland as uh, Canberra or Captain's Flat as well where the radar is located, expect some 
of accumulations on uh, Saturday evening to uh, be up towards 150 or 200 millimetres. It'll definitely be quite wet, that's for sure. Also expecting some good rainfall up in towards Queensland too. We'll just take a look at that on rainfall accumulation. Now, over the next five days, we're going to be talking about rainfall accumulations up towards 70 millimetres just offshore. Coomera on the Gold Coast expecting 35 millimetres. Brisbane itself, nothing crazy, only about uh, 10 millimetres there. Some parts of uh, southern or south central Queensland as well around St. George uh, or Weandra, we're probably going to be looking at closer to 25 to 40 millimetres of rainfall and maybe even inland as well in some, uh, areas around Birdsville, maybe around 25 to 40 millimetres there too. Some parts of South Australia could also pick up some healthy rainfall. They've had a pretty good wet season as well, mind you, in terms of some pretty good rainfall accumulations falling there. So we can't be ignoring the fact that another 40 millimetres there uh, on top of expected annual accumulations that have already been exceeded this year so far, we could be calling for some flooding there or some flash flooding in some areas. We'll just have to wait and see uh, how the weather event plans uh, plays out there. But I mean, look at this picture for New South Wales. Very, very wet indeed over the next five days. We're talking about a lot of areas picking up close to 50 millimetres, some going beyond 50 millimetres, up towards 70 or 80 millimetres. I'm not seeing any rainfall accumulations that are crazy worrying where we're talking about 150 millimetres inland. I'll get to those more scary accumulations in just a second, but uh, there could definitely be some uh, very significant rainfall accumulations that could result in uh, flash flooding and some riverine flooding as well, especially up in the northwestern corner of New South Wales, where some of these rivers are already running at moderate to major flooding alerts. Any more rainfall into those catchments could be quite interesting indeed to see what happens to the roads in uh, that part of New South Wales. But down towards southern uh, New South Wales as well, around Naruma, we're we'll looking at around 200 millimetres or so at the worst, or maybe 150 millimetres. That might be a little bit uh, too bullish, the 200 millimetres. The Axis G3 model in pretty good congruency in terms of peak rainfall accumulations yeah, between the Eastern Rebev and the Axis G3 model. The GFS, because of its model resolution, just can't hammer out the detail, but they're still expecting around 150 millimetres. All major forecast models are to occur at some point south of Sydney, between Sydney, uh, down towards probably Naruma, and that includes Wollongong, uh, maybe even the southern suburbs of Sydney as well. We can't be writing out some heavy rainfall there, but yeah, just look at how much rainfall is actually possible from this weather event up to 250 millimetres. Thankfully, nothing else beyond that. That'd be quite concerning indeed, but it definitely does look like it's going to be a very, very wet weekend for this part of southern New South Wales. So if you do live down here, this is just a heads up right now. Saturday and Sunday could be a very wet day indeed. There'll be more details on this forecast as we draw closer to the day. Now, as I have been saying, this isn't going to be an east coast low or even resemble uh, an east coast low in the forecast or anything. And that is because the winds just won't be there. It's not really going to be a rotating cyclonic low pressure system. It's more going to be an upper level rain band that's rotating around a broad low pressure area on the surface, but wind speeds are still none of our concern right now in New South Wales. Uh, peak wind accumulation over the next five days, I believe, is only going to max out at around uh, 20 or 30 knots or so for New South Wales. It's the New South Wales coastline. So this will be a very calm weather event where we're not expecting dangerous wind gusts or big waves anymore. I know that was initially on the forecast, but I do take that back now. We're not expecting expecting that to be the problem at all anymore. So yeah, that's kind of the full scope of possibilities for this forecast here. Uh, it does look like there is a good chance some pretty heavy rainfall, also some thunderstorms too. I don't think this weather event is going to go severe warned. It could go severe weather warning for heavy rainfall and dangerous road conditions, but I think it's just going to be on that cusp of becoming uh, that severe weather warned system. But just a heads up, some pretty significant rainfall is definitely on the cards for some parts of southeastern New South Wales as we draw closer to the weekend. Now, that basically does it for the New South Wales forecast. We're going to take a look at central Queensland first before taking a look at Western Australia. You can, of course, skip around to the timestamps in the description to what suits you. Uh, you can also see some gusty winds up here uh, approaching the uh, Torres Strait Islands. Now, that normally means some pretty significant rainfall is on the cards over the 10-day uh, forecast period, and I do believe that that's going to be happening probably this weekend and into early next week when those winds are going to be at their worst. But I do believe that's going to be because of the developing tropical low in the Arafu Sea, or at least over Indonesia, and also the developing tropical low in the Philippine Sea, which other forecast models aren't really behind at this point. But in terms of rainfall accumulation for far north Queensland, nothing really to write home about over the next 10 days. Um, what I can really say is expect 20 millimetres basically every single day over the next 10 days. There's no going to be a really especially dry one, run, and there's going to be no especially wet run over the next 10 days, and it's going to add up to around 140 to 160 millimetres over some areas around Innisfail, Tully, and 
and Berlin and Kerr, and then up into the Daintree as well, probably around 130 millimetres outside of Daintree Village, down towards Ingham, 140 millimetres, but for Cairns itself, only 30 millimetres. And it's just because of these speckly showers that do keep streaming ashore. They don't stop any time of the year, and you can see that they are still coming ashore here. It's a tropical rainforest at the end of the day, so they have to expect rainfall year round, and no especially dry rain is expected in the next 10 days, unfortunately for them. Let's go and take a look at Western Australia. Now we do have a nice bunch of cloud now starting to line itself up offshore and a low pressure system that's attached to it about 3,000 kilometres away from the Perth uh, metro area at this time, but it will be creeping closer over the coming couple of days. And as a result, Thursday afternoon onwards, we're expecting some significant rain to start lining itself up just offshore, which will collide by Friday morning with the chance of some strong thunderstorms as well in the Perth area, uh, especially towards Friday evening before the second front does move through through. Uh, there's going to be no rain showers behind it, but all throughout Friday, we could be expecting up towards 20 millimetres or so. The Bureau of Meteorology has a 60% chance of 0 to 10 millimetres occurring in the Perth metro area. I believe that that might be a little bit of a weak forecast this time. This rainfall event has been on the cards for the last week or so, so I do believe that we could be seeing a little bit more rainfall than that, possibly a higher chance of up to 25 millimetres or so falling around the Perth area, and once again, reciprocated amongst other forecast models. There's also the chance of showers basically all throughout the weekend, Saturday and into Sunday, and maybe even towards Monday morning as well when they should start to ease off as we get into next week. But it does look like uh, rainfall accumulations could be relatively high, especially compared to what we have been seeing over the past six months. There's going to be a pretty consistent 10 to 20 millimetres across a lot of the Perth area, but unfortunately, this rainfall does not make it over the Great Dividing Range, uh, at, or the Great Dividing Range rather, the Darling Range just outside of the Perth area and the Wheat Belt completely misses out on any significant or notable rainfall totals, maybe three or four millimetres for some areas. And as you get further in towards the wheat belt, the eastern wheat belt and the gold fields, you're really not going to be expecting any rainfall whatsoever through there. Some thunderstorms are possible in the interior, especially the south interior and the gas coin of Western Australia. But let's be real, there's probably only about 5,000 people that live in this area here. So uh, the amount of people that are going to be impacted by this rainfall is very, very minimal. And it's nothing to write home about either. But still, this a pretty good forecast of the Perth area, and especially the Perth coastal plain, which is starving for some rainfall right now. Uh, it does look like we could be seeing some pretty decent rainfall accumulations. So the GFS is really on board with widespread up to 30 millimetres. Same with the Axis G3 as well. They're calling for some more widespread 10 millimetres or so. But again, not as much as what the Eastman Bef or especially the GFS model are calling for either. And the Icon model as well calling it for some very healthy rainfall accumulations too, especially around the south between Bunbury and Mandra. So we'll be watching for that quite closely indeed. But yeah, it is starting to line itself up just offshore at this time and it does look like we're going to be seeing a pretty healthy rainfall event come ashore as a result of this cloud that's starting to build up through here. And a warm day in Perth as well, mind you, today up to 28 today. Uh, it's probably going to feel a little bit warmer than that as well because of the cool run that we've just had and also the fact that the winds will be quite fresh from the northeast. Time to take a look at the weather up in the Arafura Sea because this tropical low just will not leave us alone, especially if you are a fan of the GFS forecast model. The Eastern Blue Air forecast model really not calling for anything apart from a little bit of rainfall and showers across Indonesia. As expected, to be honest, I didn't really expect them to hold their forecast, but the GFS are still refusing to budge on having a what looks to be a rotating low pressure system south of New Guinea on the Indonesian side and around the Indonesian area into Timor. Now, by no means this is a tropical cyclone or even a tropical cyclone threat, but it does look like something that is traceable as a full-blown tropical low here, and it looks like the Met Office in Indonesia is aware of this as well, receiving their first bulletin of possible severe weather from heavy rainfall as a result of a developing tropical low across this eastern part of Indonesia. Now, again, we're going to have to wait and see on this forecast here, especially because there is some pretty good convection but by no means am I calling for a tropical cyclone or even a tropical low here, let alone it just is an interesting feature in the Australian forecast. And I do believe that I should tie up loose ends as well because I've been calling for the system basically for the last couple of weeks. It's been a real hard forecast to make. You can also see on satellite imagery, and this leads us into the next part of our video, some good convection starting to develop south of Guam. We are monitoring this yesterday, but this is textbook typhoon formation convection right here. And it looks like we're going to be seeing a pretty strong typhoon out of it as well. Now the GFS did back down their forecast very significantly in their 18Z run which came out about six hours ago. Now uh, they're now only calling for a weak typhoon to develop in the next week or so but still calling for that very strong system to start developing. Um, 
in around, uh, I'd say, eight or nine days. Now, the G uh, the East Melbourne model, rather, is completely dropping the forecast for a typhoon full stop. They're calling for a weak, maybe tropical depression or tropical storm type system going for southern Mindanao around Davao, uh, but they're not expecting anything strong there uh, at all. It's still the GFS that's calling it for a strong system to develop, but it's going to be happening later next week into Thursday and Friday next week, and it still does get up towards what looks to be Category 3 status on the Sapphire Simpson scale, definitely Category 3 status on the Sapphire Simpson scale there with peak wind gusts of course being underestimated at 149 uh, kilometers an hour so you're probably going to be talking about peak wind gusts approaching 180 or uh, kilometers an hour that's about 100 knots here so it could definitely be a stronger typhoon that's for sure now this is interesting and worth talking about especially for the Australian viewers because it will still have an impact on the Australian weather forecast especially for those up in the north of Australia in the Northern Territory and parts of Queensland now there's going to be enhanced and a lot more fresh southeasterly winds across the Coral Sea, blowing across the Timor Sea as well, and into the Arafura Sea and the Gulf of the Carpentaria, uh, as this system pulls up a lot of moisture across Indonesia. So it means that fresh uh, and warm conditions are very much expected for our northern cities, such as Darwin and around Catherine as well, and even in towards Western Australia. So next week, especially from Tuesday onwards, it could be a lot warmer than usual. There'll be stronger winds as well, some enhanced fire dangers over the northern parts of Australia. And if we were to take a look at that on the fire danger rating, you can see fire danger ratings up here in northern Australia even though we're fresh out of the wet season and there is uh, still a lot of moisture sitting around in northern Australia we're still looking at very high to extreme fire danger ratings across parts of the Northern Territory and even into parts of northern Queensland as well around Mount Isa extreme fire dangers and high fire dangers across much of northern Queensland as well of course into Western Australia you expect widespread extreme fire conditions especially this time of the year as well um, but even as things cool down extreme fire conditions over over this much land is quite a rarity to see. So it's certainly something worth watching as well. We could be seeing some pretty strong and pretty nasty bushfires start to fire up across the Northern Territory next week, especially if this typhoon does get its go uh, get itself going and it does enhance the southeasterly winds that I am expecting to occur over parts of the Northern Territory. And again, these winds could be quite strong indeed. We're probably gonna be talking about sustained winds of around 30 kilometers an hour with gusts up towards 60 kilometers an hour and peak wind gusts probably up towards um, we're about to the forecast here. Peak wind gusts, I'd say up towards 65 or 70 kilometers an hour around the Northern Territory uh, side of things. But yeah, again, just make sure you're watching the forecast, exercising caution as well, being fire ready as well up in the Northern Territory in Queensland because it is that time of the year where we don't have the rainfall to really uh, put out those bushfires that do get themselves running. And often up here, they are so remote that they just get to, uh, left to their own devices and we let them burn up in the Northern Territory uh, because there is nothing or no incentive to to really stop them unless they are going for lives or property. But yeah, that basically does it for another very extremely long-winded forecast update. There's going to be more coverage on the Cyclones Extra channel. We're also looking at a possible hurricane, which we'll talk about in a Cyclones Extra video, hopefully sometime today or tomorrow uh, in the Eastern Pacific. But again, we'll have to wait and see on that front there. But it definitely does look like the tropics in the Northern Hemisphere are starting to rumble, and that does have ramifications for the Australian region as well, don't you forget, because of the fire dangers uh, there. But yeah, that's basically all that I have time for this morning. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, as usual, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. If you've got any questions or comments, then please be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. That is all from me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.